offices. I worked in corporate America once, and if those people could see me now, they'd probably have fired me sooner. You have to be a shark in corporate America. And when I say shark, I do mean that metaphorically because having a real shark in an office environment would not only be weird, but it would be a safety hazard for both the humans and the shark. But the point is, in corporate America, there are certain things you have to do in order to thrive and succeed. And among those things is the use of a language that's almost alien to those that don't know it. And going in there, I didn't know it. Now, to be fair, I didn't even know British corporate speak either. My first venture into the corporate world was here in the United States of America, where I was already getting to grip with, you know, a different language as such. And then they throw another one at me. And today, I just want to present to you one or two or several of these corporate phrases so that after all this time I can get it off my chest and perhaps start to have closure on that period in my life. I think it's fair to say that America is absolutely obsessed with baseball, but I've come to find that it's even more obsessed with baseball euphemisms. Right? I remember when I was about 15, I overheard some girls using the phrases first base, second base, third base, right? It was in a film, not in real life. And once I started to understand what those terms mean, I started to think that all baseball references were in fact allusions to sex. So imagine my surprise when a colleague first said to me, let's touch baseball. Now, for my British viewers, it's okay. My working relationship with Deborah from Accounts was strictly professional because the phrase to touch base just means to have a quick check-in, right? Have a sit down, a quick chit chat about how things are going. At least that's what Deborah told me. Another obsession that America seems to have is with animals, but specifically putting those animals into either phrases or branding, right? So think of puppy chow. I talk about that a lot on this channel. Well, the same thing happens in corporate speak when you hear the term ducks in a row. And when somebody first said to me, ooh, Lawrence, let's get our ducks in a row, you know, I had to remind them that we couldn't bring pets into the office. And this became just another awkward moment for me, especially since I'd long advocated for ducks in the workplace. But he came back with, oh no, it just means to get everything organized in order to be prepared. And I just thought, well, why couldn't you say that then? But they can't in the corporate world, you know? It's, it's almost as if they use this language to alienate other people. <laughs> or to strengthen their own sense of identity. I don't know what it is, but it, it, just, it all feels weird. Anyway, no docs were harmed in the making of this video. Oh, when I was told that I was gonna get a pink slip for the first time, this was among the most exciting sentences ever because what was this mysterious piece of paper, right? Was it a raise? Was it a bonus? Was it $200 for passing go? I didn't know. I'd never heard of this thing. It was amazing. Anyway, this was my last day at work because a pink slip means you're getting fired. They would include these slips in an envelope telling you you'd been dismissed. And for those of you asking, the equivalent form of a pink slip in the United Kingdom is a P45. As an introvert, one of the things I found hardest about office culture was interacting with humans. You know, being put in situations with people that you hardly knew or wished you didn't. All the while being subjected to their non-work related banter about Giordano's pizza, baby photos and rain. This is known as water cooler chat and you had to keep the conversations work appropriate, right? I had to keep reminding myself, no toilet humor, no toilet humor, no toilet humor, Lawrence, even though all I was thinking about was water. In fact, the only way that I knew to get around this was to incorporate taboo British words that were unfamiliar to most Americans. So using terms like having a waz or using up all of the bog roll largely fell on deaf ears unless your manager was really into British films, which, you know, he was, and I got the pink slip. I'll never forget this, right? After my first ever meeting in the corporate world, a supervisor came over and said, Lawrence, could you type up the action items from today's meeting? And my first action item was to Google the phrase action item. Because here I was at 33 years of age, here a supervisor use a phrase so matter-of-factly, it made it seem like the whole English-speaking world knew this term except for me. Well, I googled it, just like I have right now, to discover that an action item is a discrete task that must be accomplished, usually by a single individual or a small team or group. And it just seems like it is quicker to say task. Sorry, I'm still on the phone. I don't know why I'm doing that. 
Anyone who's ever worked in an office environment will tell you that some phrases never leave you. Some phrases even find their way onto your channel from time to time. Down the road, I do intend to do what Americans call a deeper dive into this. You see, nobody really ever recovers from corporate America. You just learn to cope with time and hot baths. So what does deep dive mean? Well, they're not being literal, which, you know, is a good thing because sharks. A deep dive, according to Google, is an in-depth examination or analysis of a topic. And I have to say, when I worked in an American office, I didn't do too many deep dives. I, you learn the shortcuts. Control F is your friend. It's amazing how much of the phrasing in American offices is centered around the great outdoors. You know, you half expect your lunch break to turn into a staff picnic and nobody suggests that to management because they will run with it. But in the American office, not to be confused with the American office, famously inspired by the British and some would say superior office, a person in a meeting might well say, let's not get down in the weeds. And it's particularly impressive if they happen to say this on April the 20th, but the question I had is, why are they saying it in the first place? What does it mean? Well, let's just say you've got somebody else on the call who's a bit nitpicky, a little bit of a naysayer about the finer details of what's being spoken about. If you tell that person we don't want to get down into the weeds, it's a euphemistic way of saying, shut up! Which, you know, for 50% of my day, I wished I could have done. Because do you know how many times it occurred to me that this meeting could have been an email? Every single time, right? Anyway, uh, oh man. Let's do the final entry before I go nuts and stare blankly at an anvil. ROI. This initialism made its way into my inbox multiple times before I decided it was important enough to look up. Because until then, I just thought, well, if I don't understand the meaning of these three letters, I don't think it's going to harm anything. I'll just, I'll wing it from here. So long as I understood all of the other bits, I didn't, I'd be fine. Eventually, I did look it up, and it stands for Return on Investment, and not Republic of Ireland. And ironically, it was probably at around that moment that I realized I wasn't getting a return on the investment that I was putting into my career. See what I did with that? So I quit the corporate world and became a YouTube sensation. And those aren't my words, Robert from marketing. Actually, they are. It's called branding. You should try it sometime. It's okay, it's not real. That's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever worked in the corporate world. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. These videos are all made possible by my patrons who I get to interact with on my secret live streams every Friday afternoon. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next video, goodbye.